New show, new show. Welcome everybody to the new show, new show, new show. Hey there, welcome to the new show. It's new show, it's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show. All right, this week, 11-8-2021, we have a test in the CrossFit path in TTT Compete, and we're gonna show you that with Mike and Mia demoing. It is five sets, two minute clock, 12 deadlifts at 275, 185, 12 strict handstand push-ups. We'll talk about a caveat there in a second. 45 double unders, and once you finish that, AMRAP burpee box jump overs at 24, 20 inches in the remaining time of the two minute clock. At the two minute time frame, or at the two minute mark, I should say. Rest one minute between your rounds and you'll repeat that for again, five total sets. And the score today is the total number of burpee box jump overs that you get. How many will Mike and Mia get? We'll see in a second. Oh wait, I gotta say the caveat here. I forgot. Say the caveat. And we're back again because I forgot something for the 12 strict handstand push-ups. If you cannot do 12 unbroken each round, how this will work is you'll do an AMRAP unbroken strict handstand push-ups into kipping, and then you will just notate that your score is modified to kipping handstand push-ups. But this, the true test is going to be doing 12 and 12 with strict handstand push-ups. If you have to go to kipping, it would just be a modified score. That's fine because we'll have a modified leaderboard as well, but keep that in mind. And we're back. We're gonna get some strategies from Mike and Mia. Mike just did a full round because he wanted to see how long it would take. So we'll ask him about that and also ask him about his plan for the Burby box jumps. Mr. McGoldrick, hello. What is your strategy today? Uh, <laughs> uh, <sighs> breathe. Okay, around. I wanna get Burby box jump overs every round. So I'm gonna pace the movements to break up in a way that allows me to kind of finish close to the same time each set and get like a consistent amount of Burby box jump overs. So I'd like the intensity to increase each set, but my splits stay the same. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, so basically what he did in his round is he broke his deadlifts, he slowly walked over the wall, did his 12 unbroken strict handstand pushups, slowly walked back to the rope, did 45 unbroken. He's good at all of these movements, so it's gonna be much harder for most people, but I think that basically thinking about this being like a max sustainable set so that he can get burry box jumps is going to be the best strategy for someone that's really good at these movements. So let's talk to Miss Mia. Mia, what is the strategy today? So I'm going to break the deadlifts at least twice, maybe three times, because I'm going to be really limited on the handstand push-ups. So I know that I can go to kipping, but I'm going to try to push as hard as I can into the, <laughs> it's really close. We got to get it as close as we can. It was really close to my face. <laughs> um, try to get as deep into them as I can so that I'm working on my strict handstand push-ups. And then once I clear those, transition right away into double unders and try to get as many burpee box jump overs as I can. I would say for you, deadlifts and double unders are pretty good. Handstand push-ups, they're good, but towards the last maybe three, four, and fifth set, they're going to be tough. So that's where you got to kind of manage the workout, correct? Yeah, you have a lot of faith in me. I was thinking they'd be hard from the beginning, <laughs> but we'll see. She's, she's better than she's leading on. But this workout, definitely there'll be a bottleneck with a strict handstand push-ups, which is intentional. So again, you're trying to do a max unbroken set, and if you can't hold 12s, then you would modify into kipping handstand push-ups. Someone like Mike, who's really good at handstand push-ups, is going to be able to fly through those at least the first three or four rounds. But you also have to keep in mind, there's a com compounding effect from the burpee box jump to the wall or back to the handstand push-ups on set two, three, four, and five. So this is going to be tough. Managing the time that it takes you to do the first part into the burpee box jumps is going to matter. But again, the score is only the burpee box jump. So the goal is to be able to finish each round to get to the burpee box jump overs and see how many you can get. They're about to start in a few minutes. We're going to let them finish their warm up and we'll be back. Tell me when. And we're all back. I'm just leaning over here on one of these mats, waiting to start the clock for Mike and Mia. They are ready to rock and roll. All right, my friends. Mike, you good? I'm Mia? Good. 10 seconds. Again, this workout, five sets, two minute clock, 12 deadlifts, 12 strict handstand pushups, 45 double unders into max um, um, burpee box jumps. Ready, go. So set one, both of them said they're gonna break their deadlifts. I think that's a pretty good call for most people. I probably would actually go pretty fast in the first few sets to try to get ahead of my burpee box jumps, but I'm really good at deadlifts and strict handstand pushups, and I'm really bad at double unders, so I would strategize this slightly differently than what they're doing. So Mike did a set of six, Mia did a set of four to start. 
Mike's off the deadlifts at 21 seconds. Mia right behind. So even breaking it up into three sets still made sense for Mia. And uh, you can see how fast Mike's strict handstand push-ups. We actually saw him a few weeks ago doing strict handstand push-ups. And again, compared to Perrin, they look slow. But in general, he has world-class handstand push-ups. Probably can do, I don't know, maybe 40 unbroken. So again, keep that in mind when you're doing this workout. So he's off the wall at like 38 seconds, pretty fast transition. Mia just behind, about 10 seconds slower. Her handstand push-up speed just slightly slower than Mike's, and I think that's gonna hurt her in this workout. She already talked about that, but her deadlifts and double unders are really, really good, and she's great at burpee box jump over, so she can make up some time there. So we're right at the minute mark. Again, this is a two minute clock on this workout, and it's just AMRAP burpee box jump overs when you finish. The goal here is obviously to be sustainable. So it's five sets. The first couple sets may feel really good if you're fit, that set, that fourth set, that fifth set, <laughs> they're gonna be pretty tough. Mike had 50 seconds to do burpee box jumps. We'll see how many he gets. Mia finished at like the 117 mark there. So let's just call it 40 seconds because she got to the box at 120. Again, five total sets of this. You don't wanna blow out in the first set, but there's also something too, you're gonna have some deterioration. So banking a little bit of time, trying to get maybe an extra rep or two on the first set may make sense for some athletes. This really comes down to how sustainable can you be? And then also like your own training, you know yourself, do you usually blow up at the end of workouts or are you able to kind of push towards the end? If you can push towards the end, maybe slow yourself down the first couple sets like Mike talked about and then move faster as you move forward. All right, so that's smart rest by Mike. He knew he couldn't get another rep and time, Mia. Really, really good job by both of them in that first set. So Mike's gonna write his scores down. Yeah. Wow, he got 10 reps. That's really, really good. Mia got nine. Four sets left again. They only have a minute rest. So you're gonna see some, I would assume, some deterioration over the course of the next few sets. I think set two and set three will be okay. Uh, set four and five, that's where I would see Mike probably going a little bit slower on his strict handstand pushups, but I think he can go and broken all sets or he'll just do a fast break and then do maybe six, six. And then it's gonna really come down to how fast Mia can do the strict handstand pushups over the course of the next couple of sets. As we can see, if we turn the camera around, we've got some other people warming up. Kyle Roots was doing some BFR strict handstand push-ups. Maybe we should have, maybe we should have a course on that. That would be awesome. I know you've already done, you already have done a BFR course, but an upper body one. 2.0 is about to come out, Kyle said. All right, so they're about to start set number two, five seconds. I'll call it out for them. Three, two, one, and go. Let's see if they can keep that same deadlift speed. I actually think that both of them are good enough that their speed may increase on the deadlifts over the first few sets. It's gonna be set four and five. That will be a little bit harder. You can see Mike's speed there, exact same. Mia's is the exact same as their first set. It's just gonna come down to how fast they can do or how fast their rest breaks are between the times that they do that six and six or for Mia, the four, four, four. Even faster transition for Mike on that one. And you can see his handstand push-up speed's the exact same. Again, I think for him, the, the speed will probably stay the same until maybe sets four and five. We'll, we'll see if the Burberry box jumps play a role. Mia's speed still looks really, really good. I think for her, she's just trying to manage these sets, get to the double unders, and then she knows that she can, again, move pretty well on the Burberry box jump overs. Mike started the double unders within three seconds of his first set, so he's still on a really, really good pace. The key for him is just gonna stay calm on the double unders. He's pretty comfortable with them. And then make sure that you don't have any trips. A, a couple of trips obviously can blow you up here. And then all of a sudden you're five or 10 or even 15 seconds behind your first set. So Mia's on the double unders at 4.08, which means a minute eight. So she's a little bit behind her first set. Mike's gonna start his burpee box jumps about 10 seconds slower than his first set. So I imagine that he will not be able to get to 10 on this set but I think he was trying to bank a couple reps there. So he's, the goal probably for him is, at least what he'd said to me before we started, was around six or seven every single set. He did 10 on his first one. So if he can get six or seven, he's still ahead of that average that he wanted. All right, Mia's done with 25 seconds left and she's on to her burpee box jump overs. Uh, probably, what was that, 17 seconds slower than her first set. So there's no way she'll be able to get nine, but if she can get five or six on the board, that's still a really, really good place to be two sets in. 10 seconds, guys. Mike's still moving real well. He stopped with six seconds. Again, if you know you can't get another rep, it's pretty smart to just go ahead and call it there. Don't waste any energy trying to jump on the box and then get a no rep there because the time has stopped. So Mia got five on that one, Mike got eight. So Mia is now at 14 total reps. Mike is at 18 total reps. That's really, really good for what I thought they were going to be at. 
You see Brandy doing some wall balls. A no rep on the first one. <laughs> you know how many times I have done that, where I just throw it up and completely miss the target. It's a bad feeling, especially in the middle of a workout. I'm not sure what Brandy's doing today. Are you doing, uh, what, but what are you, what's your workout today? Um, it's three sets, 50 foot overhead, walking lunge with 65 pounds, 20 wall balls, 20 pounds of 10 foot, 15 strict handstand push-ups, rest three minutes on the skier. Woo, that one sounds just as nasty as what they're doing right now. So we'll come back to Brandy and watch her do a set in a few minutes. All right, they're about to start set number three. This is, again, I, this is the set that I think it's gonna kind of come down to how fast you can move on the strict handstand push-ups for Mia. For Mike, it's gonna be, can he get to the box at a fast time to be able to keep that, let's say, seven or eight rep mark. Let's see if Mike will keep the two sets of six. He is, he stopped at six. Mia did either four or five total reps there. I think he's, Mike's gonna keep it where he's just basically doing two sets each time on the deadlifts. I like Mia's strategy of doing three sets. It's keeping her speed pretty fast. And it's, wow, she, well, she did six, I guess, on the first one. That was six and six, so she's now back on the wall. They basically finished at the same time. It just Mike can transition faster because his handstand push-up capacity is a little bit better. But her second set, Mia's second set, still looked really, really good. And those strict handstand push-ups look great. Um, it's just a compliment to Mia real quick. Maybe even a year ago, her handstand put, I mean, how much improvement she's made over the last year is probably a better way to put this, is phenomenal. She would not have been able to finish any of the sets, I don't think, in the two minute time cap. And now she already finished two sets and she did another, what, seven or eight there. Now she's gonna go to kipping, but she's really, really improved. Strict handstand push-ups are one of those movements where once you fail, you fail. I mean, there's just no coming back from it. It's almost like a bench press or a shoulder press. It's really tough to be able to keep moving. And so that's something that is a huge bottleneck in the sport. We've seen it now with some of the workouts with the deadlifts and strict handstand push-ups in the open or the 50 strict handstand push-ups and the box step overs a few years ago. Those that have good strict handstand push-ups, it's a huge separator. So something definitely, if you don't have those, work on them. Our intermediate path gives you options to build your strict handstand push-ups. And in fact, we, uh, we actually um, had this workout last week, but a five minute AMRAP of strict handstand push-ups was our benchmark test in the intermediate path. And we're building towards a retest of that at the end of this training cycle. So Mia will have 16 seconds to do burpee box jumps. Mike had about 40 seconds again. He's doing a really good job of keeping these sets sustainable. But like I said, his, his handstand push-ups are a little bit faster and he has more time. So he stops again. Let's see, Mike, how many did you get? Oh, it's a surprise. Eight. Wow, that is, that's really awesome. And Mia, Mia got four, and she did nine strict handstand push-ups into three kipping handstand push-ups. So two more sets to go. Who else do you want to talk to? Who do you want to talk to around here, Chris? Look at this shirtless man. He just did a ski erg and I think overhead squat workout. What was it? 10 down to two, back up to 10 of toes to bar, overhead squat at 115, rest three minutes, 1K ski for time. And another yuck. <laughs> everyone's doing hard workouts today. And Ryan did his workout, now he's just sitting over there and watching everyone. How far did you run today, Ryan? Uh, I think only six miles. He said he thinks only six miles, which I'm not really sure how you think that you only ran six miles. I, I would assume that you would probably know. Do you not know how far you ran? Um... <laughs> Feel awkward. Um, I ran 50 minutes, so whatever that amounted to is probably around six miles today. He is a uh, running monster. For those that haven't seen any of his split times, go to his Instagram and see some of the paces. Uh, I think, did you just run a half marathon? And, and what was your, I know they're going, but this is interesting. What, were, what was your mile split? My mile time officially was 626. You always run a little bit longer on the course, so. I, so if anybody wants to try to match that time, that's absolutely unbelievable. He's also made some amazing progress there. All right, so 25 seconds for Mike, 26 seconds for Mia on the, uh, the deadlifts. Mike with a really fast transition again. I think to me, this is the hardest set. The last set, when they get there, they know, hey, this, I can kind of sell out in the strict handstand pushups, I can sell out in the deadlifts, and then obviously you can sell out on the very box jump overs when you get there. Uh, for this one, you can't blow up on your strict handstand pushups where you can't do any more, uh, unless you already know you're gonna go to kipping. Mia's really trying to fight with these until she basically goes to failure on the strict handstand pushups, and then she'll move to kipping handstand pushups. Mike's about 10 seconds behind his original time, but still really, really good splits. Like I said at the beginning of this, you will have some deterioration 
in, from split from set to set, expect that and plan for it, and then know how to make up some time either going faster on the burpee box jump overs towards the end, or trying to hold maybe a bigger set on the deadlifts, or just going faster on your double unders. There's there's a couple ways that you could do it. For an elite male or female, they may think about okay, I'm going to break my deadlifts the first couple rounds, but then sets four and five, I'm going to go unbroken to save some time. There are some options there, but this workout's going to be pretty challenging for most people, and you're going to have to break. So Mia has 30 seconds left for her double unders. Mike's already on his box jumps. I actually think that he may be able to get another eight or even nine reps. He was faster to the box than he was on his last set. Um, and he's doing all, I mean, 10, eight, and eight. If he can get another eight here, those are really, really good splits or, or reps for the Burby box jump overs. All right, eight seconds left. See if Mia can get to the box and get one rep. Five, three, two, one, and time, Mia. All right, one more set to go. What's the number? What's the number? Six. I thought you were gonna get to eight. Really good. Really good job, Mike. What? You don't have to talk, Mike. But what? What do you feel like is the limiter right now? Just overall general fatigue, everything. Yeah. For you, is any low back or like handstand push-ups are fine? Yeah. General fatigue. <laughs> that's that's what we're gonna say. Hi, Brent. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. What are you doing right now? I'm doing the side stretch. <laughs> the side stretch. I think this is like one of Adam's go-to <laughs> for stretching out your lats. What, uh, what's your workout today? Um, I have some barbell complexes, and then I have just like a short stinger because I'm in the middle of doing a qualifier right now. What qualifier are you doing? Um, the, the, fit fit, the fittest experience. Have you done the uh, row box jump one yet? Yeah, this, yeah. the first week was due yesterday. Okay, yeah. awesome. That, another tough workout. All right, so the last set, they just started. I think if, if I were Mike or if I'm coaching Mike, I would tell him to try to kind of blow out these deadlifts. He's really good. I know his speed has slowed a little bit, but his deadlift endurance is, is world class. Uh, I think he probably could do some big sets and then move the handstand push-ups and make up some time. Again, if your global fatigue is, you know, I mean, you're just blown up, then you have to take those breaks. All right, so 24 seconds. This was the first set where he was already on the wall. So you can see some deterioration. It's gonna happen to everyone, like I said. Be okay with it, and then try to manage your, either your handstand push-ups or go a little bit faster on your double unders to try to make up some time there to get to the box. All right, 40 seconds in, that's when they kick up, both kick up on the wall at the exact same time. So we'll see if Mike can finish this set unbroken and then where Mia will stop and go into kipping handstand push-ups. She's doing a really good job. All right, so we're at 55 seconds now. You can see this is the set where both of them are dropping off. Really good job so far to manage the fatigue, but at some point it's going to hit you. I think you have to be world-class to be able to get to the box every single set and then do, let's say, more than even four or five reps on all the sets. You're gonna see elite males and females that maybe can keep eight to 10 reps every single round, but that means that you have no, no decay in the, either the deadlifts or the handstand pushups, which is really hard over the course of 60 reps in 14 minute window for both of those. All right, so Mia's onto the rope. They'll have a chance if they can get to it to do some box jumps in this last set. 30 seconds left, both of them start. 45 double unders for them is gonna take 21 to 22 seconds. I think Mike actually has a different gear on his double unders to where he can go a little bit faster and maybe even do like 2.2 seconds per rep or 2.2 reps per second, which is super fast in double unders. And one of the things I wanted to point out, you notice that he actually started jumping forward. That's just so that he can go straight from his rope to the box jumps, which is being very, very aware. He's got five seconds. He's probably only going to get one rep. Can he get another one? Can we get a rep? Oh, great job. We'll give it to him. We'll give it to Mia. Awesome job, guys. We're going to let them calm down for a second before we ask them any questions. But we're going to talk to Brandy. Brandy, 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 Brandy. What's your strategy for your workout today? Well, I'm just trying to figure that out. So I'll do my lunge unbroken, but my wall balls are 20 pounds to 10 feet. So I'll probably break that twice because it's going to go into 15 strict handstand push-ups, which are not my strength. So I don't want to waste too much time breaking on those. I would say though that you're very good at lunging and very good at wall balls, correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so max threw you a bone and then now you have handstand push-ups. <laughs> All right, I don't know if either of them can talk right now, so we're gonna cut for just one second, and then, oh, Mia can talk, she's fine. All right, what'd you feel like, I know the question is obvious, or the answer to this will be obvious, but what did you feel like was the, the limiter, and then where did, what, what do you think you could have done better? Um, the sure handstand push-ups were the limiter. I think what I could have done better is be better at them. 
Like, I don't, I, um, I mean, I guess I could have gamed it and not done the first two sets full kipping or full strict, but that's not what I'm, I need to work on strict handstand push-ups. So I definitely pushed each set to failure to the point where the kipping were really hard, yeah. but it was really good handstand push-up training. Probably not the best burpee box jump over training, but I can do those later. <laughs> no, I, I think that you for did it exactly. Yeah. For, yeah, for me, as she's working on her strict handstand push-up capacity, it makes sense for her to like really grind those out and go to failure before kipping. For those that want to game this workout, they may only do a couple strict handstand push-ups and go to kipping. If you want to work like, like yeah. You can't game qualifiers, so don't game no. now. Yeah, that is very true. For those that are just trying to game this, though, then you could go to kipping and then get as many box, burpee box jumps over, overs as you want. But what Mia did is better training, so you got to keep that in mind. Even though this is a test for those that are doing this in TTT Compete, it's still all about training because we're prepping you for the open, so keep that in mind. If there are 60 or 45 strict handstand push-ups, there is no option to do kipping handstand push-ups. Mr. McGee. All right. Let's talk to the man. Mike, you look pretty comfortable the first three sets, and then you could see you kind of hit the wall on the fourth set. I mean, you still crushed it. How many box? You did six on the last and then two on the yeah. – six on the second to last set and then two on the last set. Yeah. Where it Was it just global fatigue? Yeah. My goal was actually because the first three felt pretty good. I was like, all right, pull back a little on the fourth and then try to just sprint on the fifth. But muscle endurance caught up. Like, my handstand push-ups were really hard. I had to break those into three sets. Deadlifts just kind of blew me up. So last set was just survival more than me wanting to drop the hammer. Yeah, and that would happen to everyone, right? Like maybe they can go through all five sets, but at some point that's where you hit that yeah. wall and it was just for you, you know it is on that fourth set right now. Yeah. The deadlifts, do you think that was a good idea to go 6-6 six, six to start? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it hurt my time a lot. It's an easy movement to break and transition quick, so. Yeah, just like Mike said, so it's one thing if it's like a, something where you have to, an overhead squat, where you have to yeah. snatch it all the way back up and then you're doing yeah. more overhead squats. A deadlift, you can do six reps, drop it, and then basically you're just resetting. So I think that makes sense. What about the strict handstand push-ups? Um, yeah, I think I just kind of rode them out as far as I could. I think for the last set to not have been as blown up, I should have broke the round of four, but I kind of grinded and was like pausing. And even though it felt fine at the time, then going to dubs, then going to burpee box jump overs. I just didn't recover in a minute. Yeah, one minute's not, definitely not enough time to recover. He did a pretty good job. So what was your total score? Um, 16, 26 plus, what did you get on the last one again? So 34 total reps for Mike. I'll have to total up Mia's. I, I don't know if they're all written on the board. I can't see it from here. Mia, what was the total? 19? 19. Uh, 19, but then on round three, I did nine strict, four and five strict, six strict. So I didn't do all the strict hands here for sure. So 19 in a modified format. Great job to them. That's the new show. We'll see you next week. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show.